Hi. This video is to help our engineers who are supporting our upstream Linux 8211 drivers. First, I'd like to review the 8211 subsystem, review the his historical evolution of the APIs and mechanisms that we have available to engineers. Then, I'd like to review the development process, how it is that we go about posting patches, getting them merged into the Linux kernel. Then, I'd like to review how it is that we make daily snapshots for testing and also make stable releases for our customers. I'd like to then move on to debugging aspects of the editor and drivers. Uh, what are the user based components, how you identify where an issue actually lies in, and give you resources that you can look for uh, further information on debugging. Let's get started with our 8211 subsystem. We now have a new Linux configuration API for drivers. What this means is we have an API that driver developers can use to write an 8211 Linux driver and define the attributes, define the 8211 device. This new wireless configuration API is called CFG8211 for config 8211. It replaces wireless extensions. Wireless extensions was the first API developed for the Linux kernel for handling 8211 Linux drivers. Wireless extensions actually consisted of an extension of IOCTLs for the standard net device structure. The wireless extensions were deemed inappropriate for long-term usage given the fact that it actually allowed sloppy uh, mechanisms for defining APIs, commands. Um, the replacement uh, in the Linux kernel for ISCTL mechanisms for better uh, structured APIs is based on Netlink. CFG211 defies a new user space API called NL8211 for Netlink8211. NL8211 is a generic Netlink family defined in the Linux kernel. You get NL8211 by building CFG811. CFG811 will be enabled in your kernel once you enable a driver. Every single Linux driver written today has to be using CFG211. CFG211 also happens to implement the wireless extensions that people are used to with old user space. You do not need to write wireless extensions for new editor on Linux drivers. Every CFG editor on driver has its own wireless extensions. MAGD11 is an API that we use to define. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, we'll review the editor on subsystem from station mode of operation first. There are two types of 8211 devices in the market. One in which the 8211 frame management is done in the firmware, and one in which the 8211 frame management is done in the host driver. Given that the Linux kernel supports a wide array of different types of 8211 devices, we support quite a few devices that require support of frame management done in software. We have grouped together uh, these set of uh, calls, and we have defined APIs for drivers to write hooks so that they can do the actual work in hardware and we can share a set of routines for frame management to be done in software. The set of APIs and collection of calls uh, in the Linux kernel is called MACD11. So MACD11 is our set of APIs used by 8211 drivers that require frame management to be done in software. CF211 then is used by MACD11 MACD11 defines the CFG11 hooks for our MACD11 drivers. CFG11 then can be used by drivers that require frame management to be done in firmware. MACD11 will only be used by drivers that have complete hardware access. Although there is no standard agreed upon name for the type of 8211 devices that do MLME frame management for station in software in the host driver, or in the firmware, we will refer to those devices that do uh, frame management in the host driver as softmac devices. Devices that do frame management in firmware will then be referred to as fullmac devices. MACD11 supports a lot of operations to be done in software, however, MACD11 still supports certain operations to be done in firmware. We call this offloading, and MACD11 supports a set of operations that can be done in firmware as well. There are several benefits of doing frame processing on the host driver. 
One of the benefits that's very visible is that you do not require a firmware upgrade whenever it is that you want to take advantage of a new feature defined by a standard or any changes done in the standard to adhere to the new specifications. Another advantage, which is more visible in the Linux community given the large number of companies that are involved in the development of the Mac 11 stack, is that whenever a new feature is developed, you will likely reap benefit of it in your driver as well. Another advantage, the trade-off though, is that changes in the Mac 11 stack can actually affect your driver if you're not reviewing the patches or not testing the patches. So active involvement from the community is required Every company who relies on Mac to launch our requires engineers to actually review the patches posted and to test them and to give proper feedback. Let's move on to the development process of the 802.11 and the Bluetooth subsystem of the Linux kernel. For this, I'd like to request that you visit the wireless.kernel.org wiki page. There's a developers section there, and in that page, you will find a process page. Let's move on to the development process of the 802.11 and the Bluetooth subsystem of the Linux kernel. For this, I'd like to request that you visit the wireless.kernel.org wiki page and then go to the developers section and under that page you will see a link to a process page. Click on that. There's a diagram there that I'm going to try to explain. Linux does not actually receive patches from community developers themselves. He receives patches from what are called subsystem maintainers. Subsystem maintainers are in charge of an entire era, area of the Linux kernel. They submit patches to Linux during a time period called the merge window. The merge window lasts two to three weeks, and after the merge window, Linux releases the first RC1 of a Linux kernel. Suppose we are closing the 2.639 uh, development cycle, and Linux releases the 2.6.39 kernel. During the, there is going to be a merge window of two to three weeks, and then Linus will eventually release the 2640 RC1 uh, version of the kernel. After that, Linus will only accept bug fixes and regression fixes. Technically speaking, we only want to uh, send to Linus only regression fixes. The purpose of the RC cycle of the Linux kernel is to fix regressions during the development cycle. The development cycle happened earlier between the RC1 and the final RC of 2.639. So let's assume that Linux releases 2.640 RC1. At that point, the development cycle for 2.641 actually starts. At that point, the subsystem maintainers start receiving patches from community developers for each subsystem for 2.641. Linux instead focuses on the stable release of the kernel, and he will try to address all the regression fixes for the 2640 release. As the kernel matures that Linus maintains, developers will require two development trees to send patches to Linus. One, to merge regression fixes for Linus's current uh, release of the kernel, and the other one to focus on the development cycle of the next kernel. In, in our case, we have two maintainers that are upstream uh, to us before reaching Linus Torvalds. David Miller is in charge of the entire uh, networking stack of the Linux kernel. He has a respective development tree called NetNext in which he merges everything for the next kernel release. He also has a Net26 tree. This is where he merges patches which are regression fixes for the current RC cycle of the Linux kernel. Upstream to David Miller we have uh, John Linville. John Linville is in charge of the 802.11 and the Bluetooth subsystem of the Linux kernel. He receives patches from community developers through the Linux wireless mailing list and he merges the stable fixes and regression fixes into the wireless to 6 tree and he sends them to David Miller. David Miller merges them into the respective net to 6 tree and then sends it to Linux Torvalds for inclusion to the RC cycle. Any changes that do not adhere to a stable fix or regression fix policy uh, or criteria get merged into the next development cycle uh, branch of uh, the editorial development tree or Bluetooth development tree called wireless next. Now, due to the nature of the development of the Linux kernel, each subsystem maintainer's respective next git tree may yield 
unresponsive or unstable environment for development work. Because of this, John Linville has created a separate Git tree for developers to work on which will be based on Linux's current RC release of the kernel. He then merges into that tree every patch that is being queued up for the next release of the kernel for the 8211 or Bluetooth subsystem. That is, he will not merge anything bleeding edge from any of the other subsystems. What this does is it allows us to work on a RC version of the Linux kernel while still merging patches for the development cycle of the 8211 Bluetooth subsystem. The Bluetooth and the 8211 subsystems are now merged together and the development process is moving forward together due to Bluetooth 3.0 development. As Linux focuses on stabilizing the current release candidate of the Linux kernel and as John stabilizes the 8211 and Bluetooth subsystem through the wireless testing Git tree and letting developers work on that, there is a desire to also ensure that at the point at which we reach the next merge window, we will not have many conflicts between the different subsystems of the Linux kernel. We accomplish this by working on integrating every single uh, respective subsystem's next Git tree into one Git tree. We call this Git tree Linux Next, and Stephen Rothwell is the maintainer of that Git tree. Now let's recap really quickly how it is that developers get their patches merged because we have been focusing mainly on how subsystem maintainers send patches to Linux and how they get their patches merged into the Linux kernel. Community developers first post to a public mailing list for each subsystem. Those patches get reviewed by the community and will be subject to coding style requirements and if they get accepted by the community, they will get merged into to the subsystem uh, maintainer's development tree. If the patch qualifies as a stable fix or a regression fix, it will also get propagated into the respective stable tree. Now, the maintainer that you send patches to may not actually be sending those patches directly to Linux. There may be another maintainer. In our case, for 8211 and Bluetooth, we send patches to John Linville and John sends them to David Miller eventually, and then eventually David Miller ends up sending them to Linz Torvalds. We don't really need to worry about too much about uh, how it is that they end up, those patches end up getting into Linus's tree. What we need to care about more is when it is that we're close to the next RC cycle, the kernel. We do not have a specific date or time frame in mind in which we know or can guarantee that Linus will release a new kernel. Typically though, it's about two months, but there is no set in stone time that Linus will use or adhere to to release the next uh, kernel. The kernel is basically done when it's done. It's done when Linus feels that it's stable enough and that there is nothing being broken. Given the loose nature of the schedule of the releases of Linux kernel, we have to ensure that when we do development, we simply post patches as soon as possible and not focus too much about the release cycle of the Linux kernel and instead focus more on getting the features done and implemented. The stabilization of Linux kernel then is not focused by us, but by the subsystem maintainers and Linux Torvalds. What we should be focusing on is getting the development work done and posted and reviewed as soon as possible. On over then, two large components of the development process of the Linux kernel. One is the stabilization of the Linux kernel through the RC cycles that Linux focuses on, and the other one is ensuring that the next merge window happens smoothly. To support our customers, though, we need to actually focus on getting the features that we have implemented to them and ensuring that they are able to use these features regardless of the kernel that they're using. This is not a concern of the developers of Linux kernel. This is a concern typically of Linux distributions and of companies supporting customers. As you may be thinking, customers or end users do not want to work on compiling their own kernel or using the latest release of the kernel or the RC cycle of the kernel. Because of this, we have worked on a backport compatibility module which allows us to use bleeding edge kernel and also RC cycles of the kernel and stable releases of the kernel on older kernels.
For 8211 Bluetooth and general networking drivers, we accomplished this today by a compact module which we maintain and a compact wireless package that allows us to bring code from the Bluetooth subsystem and the 8211 subsystem together and apply certain patches and use the compact module to ensure that the development code actually does not change too much.